Hi, I'm Robin DeYoung and I'm a structural engineer. I'm going to show you the very simple formulas you can use to design a long truss. So let's just imagine here we have a very long span of 30 meters and it's perhaps a uh, roof that we're going to support on this. And the way that you span such a long length rather than say with a steel beam is by designing a truss. So you might have something along these lines here. So we have the supports at the end. We have a steel truss and it's spanning 30 meters. So the first formula I want you to think about and remember, this is particularly useful in an exam situation, is that the depth is equal to the span over 15. Now that's just an approximate figure. So 30 divided by 15 is two. So if you're creating a preliminary size of a truss, what you want to look at is the length or the span over 15 or over 18, some, something like that. So that's the first formula I want you to remember. The second thing, the second formula, is if you have a load on here, so there's a distributed load on the top, call it W, and it's equal to 10 kilonewton per meter. Now I use kilonewtons per meter, that's SI units, if you're designing in, in Europe. Um, you can obviously take, if you're in America, you can uh, change that to the units that you need. So we've got 10 kilonewtons per meter, as a UDL. So to find out the moment, so remember this formula as well, and it's the same as a simply supported beam, M is equal to WL squared over eight. So in our case, we've got 10 times 30 squared divided by eight. So let's get the calculator for that one. 10 times 30 squared divided by 8. 1,125. Kilonewton meters. So that's the moment. So remember this formula here. The next formula that you need is to find out the axial load on the bottom cord and the top cord. So to find the force, we take our moment and divide it by the length between the two cords. So F equals M over L, which is equal to 1125 kilonewton meters divided by two. So we have 562 and a half kilonewtons of axial load in the top and bottom cord. So that, I'll just clarify that the figure we're talking about is is this here so in fact we'll call that D M over D where the depth is that there the depth between the cords which is two meters and the way to remember that is is that if you've got a moment with the units of 10 uh, with the units kilonewton meters if you divide it by a value of meters, you end up, crossing those two out, you end up with a value for kilonewton, which is what we've got. So that is the third formula I want you to remember. The next thing we need to find out is our value of I required. The value of I is a value of stiffness. So if uh, we use this to limit the deflection 
and the deflection we're going to limit that to span over 360. So I've got a little formula here that I want you to remember. I required is equal to 2.24 WL squared. Now that's a formula that I've derived by inputting L over 360 and values such as Young's modulus to, to derive this. So it takes care of all the units. So in our particular case 2.24 times uh, W which is 10 kilonewtons per meter. Um, in this case that's total load. So we're going to take 10 kilonewtons per meter times 30 is 300 kilonewtons times 30 meters squared. Two point two four times three hundred kilonewtons, that's the total load, times thirty squared equals six hundred and five thousand. And the this formula gives you the output in centimeters to the four. So that's the fourth formula that you will need to remember. So there's a really neat little formula that will tell you the I value of a truss and it's approximate. I is the area of the cord, top or bottom cord, multiplied by the depth squared over 2. So once you've sized your top and your bottom cord and you have a preliminary size for that based on the the force that it's able to the axial load that it's able to take you can then find out your I value and compare it with your I required and just check that the deflection is not greater than span over 360.